Hi, I'm Brent Murphy, pharmacist specializing in natural medicine. Welcome into The Circle with Solal. In this series, we've been talking about stress and how it affects a number of health problems. And today's a biggie. It's how stress causes anxiety and the consequences of that. You know, 75% of doctor's visits are stress-related. And during COVID, the South African Depression and Anxiety Group has reported that more than 50% of South Africans are suffering from COVID-related stress. So we've invited a guest to chat us through stress and anxiety. She's a radio and TV personality, a motivational speaker, and most importantly, she's a philanthropist that does a lot of work with children. I'd like to welcome Mishka Lush. So lovely to be here. <laughs> but also, I actually have anxiety as I walked in. But yet you have a career that is a radio presenter, a TV presenter, a motivational speaker, <laughs> and you suffer from anxiety. Can you talk us through a little bit about how it started and your life story? I'll take you right back to the beginning, and that's to that photo over there. Um, I had my very first encounter with anxiety, which I never had up until this moment. Um, my mom was diagnosed with stage four lung cancer in 2015, even though she was very healthy, she never had a drink in her life, and I wish that was an exaggeration, but she never did. She never smoked in her life, so it was very odd at the time as a 23-year-old yeah. with a super healthy mother um, to be diagnosed with cancer. I had severe anxiety, and I didn't know what it was at the time because I never felt it before, but it was, I think it stemmed from not having control over a situation. I couldn't save her. I, yeah. did not, I couldn't have done anything to not allow this to happen. <sighs> what, what, what was the feeling you felt? I had no control over my body. I would have severe heart palpitations and... Yeah. That's, it, a common, that's a common giveaway of anxiety. Heart exactly. palpitations, panic attacks, yes. sweaty palms, sudden onset. I'm sweating know. right yeah. now, yeah. yeah. That was the onset of anxiety. You never had anxiety before that? I've never had it before. And yeah. has it then stayed with you then? Like, for example, you say now, when, you, when you're doing your radio and your TV, and do you get anxious then also or, or, or not? People would never think that I do. Yes. But I do. Yeah. Um, even back to that photo. Yeah. That was one of my first MC gigs in Johannesburg I got after losing my mom. And it was the most stressful situation of my entire life. Yeah. I was sweating, I had heart palpitations, but yet I still turned it into something good somehow because this is what I love. So what sort of techniques do you do? Do you get a lot of sleep? Do you do yoga? Do you just bear with it or, or what? <laughs> I've always been fairly healthy, so I train a lot. Yeah. I feel uh, uh, yoga, running, and just weight training. That helps. I do it every day, and I can feel if I don't train, there's a severe difference in my body that I can immediately feel. Um, I sleep. I'm a good sleeper. Mm. I'm a very good sleeper. Well, that's important. Yeah, so I go to bed religiously at 10 o'clock at night, yeah. every night, even weekends. That's good. Um, and breathing techniques, I feel, has worked. But I discovered that on my way to radio, and that's why I sent this photo, because this was yes. right after this episode happened. Um, I work at the SABC building, and it's literally two minutes away from the soccer stadium in Cape Town in Greenpoint, okay. right? Yes. And as I walked out of the studio, got in my car, I drove towards the soccer stadium, and I think the game finished like 10 minutes before, so everyone came out of the stadium at the same time. And everyone surrounded my car. Naturally, they are all, you know, they, they, they just won a soccer match, they are excited. And in my brain, I thought, I'm gonna get hurt, something's gonna happen to me, I'm gonna get stolen, I'm gonna get hijacked. And it just balloons or snowballs even worse. <sighs> and it took me about six minutes to gain control mm. over my body. Mm. And I had to shoot that afternoon. Wow. And this was just after getting a severe panic attack, nearly making a car accident. And that's why I'm here today, because I feel that was the photo I posted on Instagram, mm. but there was so much happening, mm. so much happening in here. Mm. And I feel that's what I want people to understand, that social media and everything mm. else is what we want to put out there. We don't put the bad, we don't put the real, the real stories. Yes. The, what really happened and what you are really feeling. And this is my first time openly speaking yes. about the fact that I do suffer from. Yeah. 
anxiety. So another thing I, I, I always like to point out to people when they talk about anxiety and just to the audience is the difference between stress, anxiety, and depression. Stress is the outside thing that, that we experience. Mm. Some people like yourself and myself to a degree respond with anxiety. Some people handle it fine. And we need to be aware that just because one person handles stress fine, that we can't presume that the other person handles exactly. stress fine. And, and, and anxiety can be debilitating. Oh. Did you ever take any medication? Did you ever self-medicate? Is I've there never. a reason for that, that you didn't? To be honest, it stems back to what happened to my mom. I'm very afraid to take anything that isn't natural. Yes. Or yes. I've just never gone to self-medicating ever. Yes. I just drink yeah. a lot of water <laughs> and green juices. There's one in my handbag back there, yeah. and I think that would myster- magically help me. Yes. Yes. <laughs> um, no, but I haven't. No. I haven't. I just life coached myself through it. And, and you know what? There's, 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 there's a good logic for you not taking any, any medication mm-hmm. if you can get away with it. The anxiety medicines can be addictive. Really? They, the anxiety medicines, which are benzodiazepines, they can numb you into feeling calmer, but they stop working after a while. And so you take a higher dose to get the effect, and then it stops working well, and you take a higher dose, and you end up taking very high doses just to get the same effect, until it gets to a point that you never get the same effect, no matter how high the dose is. And then when you try to come off the anti-anxiety medicine, you get rebound agitation and panic. But the area that I specialize in, natural medicines, you can get things that help with, with, okay. with relieving anxiety. Now, one interesting thing is green tea. Oh my word, I drink two <laughs> cups every morning. <laughs> but it must be caffeine-free green tea because oh. the caffeine can make cause anxiety. So two things you have to bear in mind. You have to have green tea that's got no caffeine in it, okay. so decaffeinated. And the second thing is to bear in mind the part of green tea that is actually having the anti-anxiety effect is very, very little in green tea. It's called theanine, which is a which is an amino acid protein, and it's tiny inside green tea. So you're going to get somewhat of a benefit by drinking a caffeine-removed green tea because of okay. a small amount of theanine. But the other thing is you can actually buy theanine capsules. In other words, you can buy that extract that you find inside green tea that you would probably have to have liters and liters of green yeah. tea, probably overdose on too much of the other things <laughs> in green tea. Yeah. Um, and, and, and what's lovely about theanine is it's not working like the, anti, the anti-anxiety medicines work. And that's why I think theanine is such an amazing um, anxiety reliever. Another thing which is quite common um, is a lack of vitamin B12. Yeah. Vitamin B12 is what we call a methyl donor. Now, what that means is mm-hmm. it gives a chemical molecule called a methyl group which is the building block that your body needs to make antidepressant hormones. All your antidepressant hormones in your brain all contain methyl groups, but they have to get it from somewhere. And one of the places it gets it from is from vitamin B12. One mustn't just focus on the mental effects of stress and anxiety, but also how can we protect the body, the heart Mm. and the brain from the effects of stress? And there's two herbs that do that. Okay. The one herb is called rhodiola rosea, Mm. also known as Arctic rose root. And the other one is a herb called ashwagandha. And you can find it together inside a product called stress damage control. It's called stress damage control, not because it's stress control. Mm. It prevents the damage that stress causes to, to the heart that. and the brain. So what I say to people, if you're anxious, if you're nervous, if you, if you live a high stress life, particularly if you respond to stress mm. uh, with anxiety, you should really be taking three things. You should be taking vitamin B12, you should be taking ashwagandha and rhodiola rosea, stress damage control, and you should uh, be taking theanine. And then you're not going to have any of the side effects of, of, of pharmaceutical medicines. You now have a partner, you have a, you have a significant other, you have your other half. Yeah. Has it helped at all in terms of anxiety or stress, or is that, a, 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 is that something you suffer alone? Um, to be honest, we've been together for 10 years now, okay. so he's been with me pre-anxiety okay. with the loss of my mother, becoming a mother to my baby sister. Yes. Um, and even though he doesn't suffer, he's so blessed and lucky, he, he's never had anxiety. He doesn't know what it feels like. Yes. He doesn't know, and he doesn't always understand when I try to explain what I'm going through at the moment, mm. but he's been a phenomenal partner when it comes to being there. And even though he doesn't know how to be there, I think it's so important for people to understand that sometimes we don't want to talk. We just want you to listen or we just want you to be there. Just understand. Just be there. Because 
like I said, he, he's never had anxiety, so it's hard for him to understand. But sometimes I don't want you to understand, just be there. Yeah. I'd like to ask you before we go, what advice would you give to people that are experiencing anxiety or depression? What advice would you give as a process by which they, 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 they get out of it or get over it? <laughs> or manage it? Can I be honest? Yes. I am on this journey myself. Yes. And I'm still learning and making mistakes and learning how to successfully cope with having anxiety. But I would say first and foremost, you have to, talk, you have to identify it and know that you are struggling with either depression, stress or anxiety and find what works for you. But you have to talk about it because yes. that was my biggest mistake. I hit it for yes. probably a year and a half where I just thought, okay, after everything, yes. I thought this is just stress, I can manage it myself until I lost control yeah. over my lower body. Yes. So talking about it first and foremost is important and it's normal. That's, yeah. that's the one thing I had to learn is that I'm not alone. Well, Mishka, thank you very much for opening up like this. It's been a fascinating talk and for your advice. Thank you so and, much. And thank you for joining us in The Circle with Salah. Thank you for having me. Thanks very much for joining us. If you'd like any more information on anxiety or what supplements to take, visit our website, www.salal.co.za. Goodbye. I mean, not everyone feels great every day they yeah, wake up, correct. but even on those days, I need to know that like, I need to still show up because there are people that are depending on me. That, I mean, alone is sort of like this, just like residual nonstop um, stress. Mm -hmm.